Hi guys, welcome back to another video. I'm just down here with the goats. I've let the belly out and I'm just checking to see if there's anybody bucking and they're getting on really well. And so hopefully at the beginning of March we'll have some baby kids in the farm. This week's video is going to be a build video and I'm definitely not a steel worker. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm a woodworker for sure, uh, but I'm not a master steel worker. So if you see anything I'm doing and you have an idea of doing it better or easier, um, stick a comment in there and uh, give me your 10 pence on it. Um, as I always like a bit of feedback and maybe ideas. Um, this project, to be honest, I've done a lot of it on the fly. Um, just hadn't, I've thought about it in my head. Um, I haven't really uh, worked it out in paper, so I just went at it and I think it came out all right. This week we're going to make an ad lib feeder for the poultry. Uh, the drawings for this are really in my head, but here we're making the, uh, I'm going to call it like a creep feeder, ad lib feeder. Uh, I'm making this so we can fit inside my egg mobile, um, so that's where the dimensions are really coming from. And I only really needed to hold about 300 kilos of grain, so I'm actually going to make them in 8 foot sections, um, so I can put multiple ones in, and just they're easy to, I want to have it so I can put them in, take them out, use them in the winter housing, etc. So I'm making them in 8 foot sections, and then... I'll just put in enough to hold 300 kilos. Um, I'm playing about uh, with the shape that the bin's going to be. So it's going to be square like this. And now I need to make uh, a funnel so that the feet will go in here and funnel down. Um, you get a better idea as I get further along. I've got the steelwork all finished. Um, so I've, I've worked out this feeder here will hold 150 kilos of feed. Um, so we've just got to we're going to use some of this, um, this is just galvanized steel plate. You could use aluminium, it's just more expensive, but it's uh, 0 0.03 mil thick galvanized steel. And we're just going to screw it on. So we put one sheet on here and one sheet on here. And that basically makes our hopper. And then we've got to make a little trough that'll go, it'll have a side and it'll go across the bottom and up the other side. And that'll catch your feed and the chickens will come around here and eat from the trough. To make the trough here, all I've done is I've clamped my trough, I've marked it, I want to make a, a turn 75 centimeters in from this end, 75 centimeters in from the end, and just basically make a U channel. And I've clamped a piece of steel in underneath, a piece of steel on top, and now I'm just working along the hammer and a piece of wood, and just slowly, and I'll just bend it along, and it'll keep my line pretty straight. Doesn't need to be perfect, the chickens don't mind. Um, so this will do the job and we'll get it done. Now I've got my trough in and I'm just debating here if I need to put a, an indent up the way here so that when the pellets fall down here, they go into the trough. To be honest, I think the chicken's gonna be able to get her head in and scrape. She's gonna be able to scrape from there and scrape from there. I don't think it's totally necessary here. Um, what you don't want is feed just sitting here and the new feed just cascades down past it so you get a, a little pump of really old grain in the middle. Um, so if you really want to avoid it, you would just make the, make the floor come up a little bit here and then back down. Um, I don't think it's necessary in this case. I'll have another think about it. Maybe I will do it or maybe it'll be fine. I've managed to get one coat of paint uh, on the top side of this. So now I've got to flip it over and do all the surfaces on the bottom. And I can put two coats of paint on this and um, it'll keep it much better. But it is dry. Sometimes it dries, so we're just going to flip it over. Try not to scratch your paint too much. And now we're just going to paint the underside, let that dry. I'll give that a second coat, flip it back, paint the other side a second time. Then we just got to get the tin on it then. I'm really not a fan of painting. Um, I just find it very boring. I'm not very good at it. So uh, I was kind of put this job off, but I got to get it done. I'm just using some oxide paint. It's not the nicest paint in the world, for sure, but it, it does a good job coating the steel and stopping it from rusting. And steel is quite expensive now, so I've got to do something uh, to protect it. Um, galvanizing 
I'm just too stingy to galvanize it really. Uh, Got our feeder finished up here, well painted it. We've got our feeder finished and first thing we're going to have to do is fit the trough and then start cutting panelling. Um, this panelling here is 6mm I think. Uh, I've got more stuff uh, which is 8mm which I'm going to use for this here bit because it's going to have a bit of pressure on it from the feed. So what I'm actually thinking is, thinking too I'm going to put two little skids, timber skids in here and I basically kind of do what this block here is doing, only uh, take the wear uh, where it's hitting the ground. So I'm going to get on these couple of jobs. Screws in the van, which is over at the house, so I've got to go get them. For a lot of the work we do in the farm, I just use these self-tapping screws, um, or hex heads, and they can drill themselves in. Uh, whoever invented these was a genius. Um, whoever I'm sticking wood to metal, metal to metal, um, these are my go-to guys. You can get them all different lengths. You can get them with rubber washers as well for roofing. Um, so really handy. I only need small guys here. As we're just sticking this tin on. You could revet it, but then you'd have to drill the hole, get a revet gun out, um, screw that. Just a simple cordless drill. Um, you get this guy here, he goes into your drill, and then these guys fit in, and because they're they're a hex head, you can get a lot of torque on them, and you just drill that in, job done. Um, here's an interesting one for anyone out there that, uh, let me flip this up a bit, and now I've lost myself. Um, anyone not sure how to use a cordless drill, really handy piece of kit. Almost every cordless drill, you'll see three settings on the head of it here. See if we can get them up. So you can see there's a hammer, then there's a screw, and then there's a drill. And what that for, that's basically got different torque setups on the drill. So the drilling one will send torque to the tent. I can't stop this. If I hold on to it, it'll continually send the maximum torque the drill can there. So that's why if you're drilling through something, you don't want the drill torquing out. Um, you want to give it its maximum power. Then the next one, which is the screw. And then that relates to the torque settings. You see there's numbers on here too. There's one in this drill here. There's a Makita drill. There's one through to 21. And that basically relates to the amount of torque it's going to put on it for when you're driving screws because you don't want to have a little Phillips head in there driving a small screw and the screw gets stuck and the drill just sends all the torque down. You're just going to break the little head of the screwdriver. So what the torque does now, I'm on torque, you see I'm holding it and here clicking out. And so what you do is, depending on the size of the screw you're driving, you pick the different number and when you drive in the screw, when the screw sits home, it'll start to click out and so if you drive the screw home and it goes in a bit more into the wood, if it's wood you're going into, well you, you bring back the torque a little bit and then it'll sit seated there. Um, and then the last set and then is the hammer and that's if you're drilling through masonry mainly um, and you want some hammer action, it'll, uh, it'll boom, 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 boom. Um, I was quite a ways uh, along my life before I actually knew how to use a drill properly. 
Um, so very handy tool. Um, torque's great because you know once you set the torque up, if you're screwing into say wooden panels, once you get the torque there, you don't have to be watching. You just stick the screw on, get it done. You don't because you know the torque set up right. Um, so always handy to know how to use a drill. found these two pieces of lath lying around, I'm not quite sure what I was using them for, but uh, they look like perfect candidates for this job, make little skids. Okay, after two skids on, and we're going to put it back. It's going to be a bit of weight in this, but I think it's going to last a long time. And once it's fitted in the egg, I'm not going to be moving it anyway. I think it's going to go in the polytunnel for the winter housing and then it'll go in the egg mobile we'll then the rest of the time. My plan is if this works pretty well, this design, I'll make another one or two of these. Um, but I just want to trial this design first and see how that goes. Now this is 0.8mm galvanized steel which I'm using for the size. It's slightly thicker uh, because it'll have a bit of weight uh, pushing out on it. guys cut and sometimes when you cut them it leaves quite a sharp edge so I'm just going to run along. I don't have uh, a little bit for the grinder so I'm just going to run along with the file quickly and take the sharp edges off. A lot of the time I'm working on my own so clamps are always kind of a necessity when you need 15 hands and you've only got two. So we'll see how this goes. Okay, so I've got it fitting pretty much where I want and maybe you couldn't see it before but now you can see when we put this side on here and this side on here the feed goes down the middle and then into the trough. Chickens get at it from this side and it constantly fills up. So I'm going to start on one side screwing it down and work my way over that way I take any creases out of it and we'll get this side on. through the steel then I switch it to first gear that's just to uh, uh, make it a bit easier on the drill
is headed actually. Uh, before I put the ends onto it, it's probably a good time to show how it works and actually see if it does work. So I'm going to put a bit of feed into the middle of it here and I'll just set you up so you can watch what happens. So you can see how the feed builds up in here and then here it is down here and what's really important is that this lip, see it's, the feed can't come out over the lip so the chickens will peck in here and they'll eat but this lip's quite high, There's oh, the feed is that far away so that's nearly two inches because the chickens will scrape and hit and it keeps all the feed in here um, so I'm happy with that, it looks good, um, now I've got to get the feed back out of here. Uh, I reckon it can hold about 150 kilos, uh, so I'll be interested to get it finished up and fill it up to see how much it'll actually hold. I've got the end cut out here, I'm getting them ready to screw on now. There was one thing I had to do early in the project um, was, you can see here how this trough doesn't come all the way out, there's a gap here. If I was to, f it was kind of technically impossible for me to cut out slots and get the trough in because the frame was all welded up. So I need to make a little piece that runs along in here to stop the feed falling out. So I'm just gonna use these offcuts um, to make a little piece. Uh, basically, if I wanted the throw to come the whole way to the end, I would have had to put the throw in before I put in this bar here. And I didn't do that. So I'm kind of making up for it now for not, not uh, figuring that out before it was too late. Um, so I need to clean up this steel here a bit. And just make a little end for the trough, which will basically go in there. Uh, job will be a good one then. And then. It'll make more sense then to put the ends on then. And once the ends are on then we're just going to make a lid. Okay, so I just kind of eyeballed the shape. Um, I just held up the piece of steel and marked it with the marker. And I think this is roughly the shape it's going to be. So I'm just going to offer this in and see how close or far away it is. Mm -hmm. It's actually not that bad. Um, let me lift you up. I think I can, where we're at, I think I can kind of push this into place. Um, this is pretty pliable, this stuff. I want that to make a 90 degree bend here anyway. And then I'll fold this around this side here. So I think I'm going to be able to push that in. What do you think, Jess? You want me to just throw some stones for you? Yeah, let's give this a whirl. Okay, I think that's going to work. We can get that guy tight in there. This is going to come bend this out, screw this in. So then the feed has to go down and in there. And what I think I'll do then maybe is I'll seal up around all these joints. And when I put it on the side, I'll seal up this joint here with a bit of sealer. And hopefully that'll do the trick. Okay, I think that's pretty good. We can seal along here and in here. And just do the same on that side now, and we're getting there. And pretty happy with that. I mean, it's not the prettiest job in the world, but we sealed it all the way around. 
and get this end done. And it's all sealed so the feed can, the only thing the feed can do is fall into the trough. And that's what we wanted. So, one last thing now is make a lid, which I'm going to use that tin there. And then I've got, I'm recycling some box action here. I'm going to use some of this just to, I was going to just put the lid on on its own, but it's not stiff enough. So I might use some of this, it's just some galvanized box action, um, just to stiffen up the lid. And um, its only purpose is to stop uh, the chick, you know, if the chickens want to jump up on top of it, but they can't get into the feed or shit in it. Um, I haven't built this thing to be waterproof. I mean, I could. All I need to do is put a, an oversized lid on it, really. I'm going to put a lid on it that fits it perfect. But if I wanted to make this oversized or waterproof, I would just put a put a lid that comes maybe 300 mil out this side, 300 mil out that side, and should the whole thing's going to be waterproof then. Okay, what I'm thinking of doing here, the easiest thing, I've just got this sitting here. I think I'm going to screw these guys onto the tin when I figure out where I want them. And then I might take it down home, what I call home, uh, where I grew up, down to my uncle's shed and just weld up this frame then. Might be the easiest thing um, because it's really a pain in the arse working with this stuff, it's so flexible. So I'm just going to mark where these go, flip it over, screw it onto these and then I'll weld it after. I've loaded this into the van. I'm going to take it down and weld up these joints here, and then we'll bring it back when we're nearly done. Little van's handy, you can get a lot of stuff in it, including Jesse Bear. <laughs> I'm definitely not the best welder in the world, uh, definitely something I need to learn more about, but I can stick stuff together. Now, this is galvanized, and you got to clean off the galvanized one. You need to make a, an electrical contact to start the arc, and two, this is full of, um, I think it's like zinc and other stuff, impurities that would get into the weld and would compromise the weld, because that stuff has to go somewhere. Um, so I've got to buff this off, um, so I have a better chance of making a stronger weld but I mean ain't going to be no 20 ton trucks going over this uh, I just want to give it a bit of strength so I'm going to weld four corners and these uprights I want to put the hinges on here so that's why I've put in these as a bit of support for the hinges so nothing to it but to do it As you can see, we just polish it up like that there. Gives us a nice surface to get our weld to stick to. Now we just got to tack it.
Okay, for some reason my GoPro isn't recording there, but I've been working on getting the lid on. And I've set it up and you can see it's, uh, I've got my hinges there. And I thought this would be nice, but it's a little bit too far to the side. So what I'm thinking of doing is unscrewing my hinge out of there and either screwing it on here or on here. So I'm going to unscrew that and play about with it to see what looks best. And hopefully the GoPro won't play up on me again. I've added on some ropes here to catch the door. Um, when we're in winter mode, I'll use it. It's going in underneath the nest boxes, so it won't actually be open. When it's in the eggmobile, the door will only be opening about that much, and I'll have to put a little stick in there to prop it open. Um, and then I'll feed my, feed my, just tip the bags in there. Um, it's a little bit tight in the eggmobile, but you gotta, you got to work with what you got to work with. So there's my two hinges just stuck on there. And now the big question is, how much will it hold? Um, Hopefully I'll get it out to the eggmobile and get some feed in it tomorrow morning. Um, I gotta wait for the uh, silicone's actually. It's quite dry. Um, we'll see. We'll see. Now um, I explained to you guys already uh, why I wanted to build an ablet feeder. Um, it's down to time and motion. I go to my layers three times a day. Generally, uh, I'd say all said and done. I'm almost 10 minutes into the, into a feed. I could probably do it a bit faster if I needed to, but in reality, I'm about 10 minutes into my feed, so that's 30 minutes a day. This here's gonna eliminate that 30 minutes a day, and I'll just have to service. My plan is to fill these once a week, um, and that'll probably take me like maybe, for well, top end, 30 minutes uh, to fill these up. So, um, let's talk cost here quickly. Um, so let's talk about materials and cost here for a minute. In materials, I'm 50 euros in box section and I'm 70 euros in sheet material uh, so that's 120 and if we go for hardware and screws uh, I mean a maximum material wise here a maximum 150 euros into this. Now I looked up a skid feeder from uh, Chicken Caravan in Australia they're $750 which is the equivalent of about 500 euros um, so that's 350 euros of a saving and I'm going to probably need three of these so we're looking at nearly over 1100 euros of saving by building these myself um, it didn't take me that long I've done this over a few evenings um, I'd say I could build this in less than eight hours uh, no problem for one and of course that I'm comparing that to 500 euros that doesn't include delivery either um, so I've definitely saved myself over a thousand euros just by building this myself. And that's how I try and make my money go as long as possible on the farm or stretch it as much as possible by doing a lot of the work myself. Um, and th this is gonna last me a long, long time. Um, yes, the steel is painted, not galvanized, but I mean, this isn't gonna need any care for at least 10 years. And even at that, maybe I'll give it a lick of paint and clean it up and off we go again. Pop it on my little winch trailer here. This trailer is really handy. This is my winch for moving my eggmobile. Um, but it doubles up as a little trailer. We can fit poultry crates on here um, or anything and everything ends up on there too. So let's get this out. The eggmobile is way out the field here. So let's get it out there. As you can see from the position it's on the trailer now. That's not how we left the yard. It may have fallen off and way out here, but that's fine. Uh, now we just got to slide it in here. Hopefully that won't be too difficult. Uh, I don't have much time because the sun's going down, so I'm just going to get this in here and see what it looks like then. Okay, we're in. Um, I'm actually going to move it a bit further down. I didn't. I had this board pushed back and I didn't realise the birds couldn't get through there. But we're pretty much in. And now we get some feet in it. There we have it. Um, I didn't fill it up because it's too late in the evening to be carrying out feed. But there's nearly a day's worth of feed in there. Chickens can come. Num, 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 num. Happy days. They really can't get any to come out in there, but if they did, it's just gonna fall on the ground where they'd eat it anyway. But uh, I can't see them being able to peck it out of uh, that trough. The trough is just too deep for them to peck it out. And we've also got this side here. Happy days. Um, it's great to get that project out of the workshop and in action. And I'm just gonna observe it now for a few days and see how it performs and see if I need to make any tweaks or anything. It's going to be a little strange for the birds having it in here, they're not used to it, but 
because there's feet in it, I think they'll become friends with it pretty soon. Like this girl here, I think she's okay. And I designed them so they can sit under the nest boxes here and I've left enough clearance so no matter how much I've the nest box tilted, it won't hit it. Um, it is taking up floor space now. I'm not worried about losing floor space to the feeder because um, uh, because I'm not a uh, certified egg producer, so I'm not so worried about getting every square meter out of it. Um, the birds are never in here anyway, so it's not really taking up any space for them. Um, and as I said, in a, I think I mentioned it in another video, but my big reason for wanting to get the feeders inside is uh, I could. Uh, my original plan was to put them outside, put them as pull-alongs, um, but I was going to have to come up with a way to keep the feeder closed um, and only have it open certain times. I'm going to have to put doors on there and have timers on the doors because uh, crows, um, magpies, uh, pigeons would all just hang out around here. Um, and I, I see it. They're, they're used to um, some farmers ad-lib feed lambs and calves and they know these feeders um, have feed in them. Uh, the, they'd be very brave if they're going to go up into the egg. Well, they might try it. I'll keep an eye out if they do. <laughs> It'll be interesting, but um, I think they're going to, there's too many birds around here in this flock. Um, now they do, I have, depends on the flock, different years has been different. Um, I've been feeding the birds out here and uh, normally I hang around and watch and generally a crow may fly down, but the rest of the birds will chase them away. This flock aren't that pushed about chasing them away. Um, other years I've had flocks that wouldn't let a bird come within 100 meters and they'd be out giving it crap. So different flocks just have uh, different psyches. Um, but I think think this is going to work well. I mean, time will tell. That's why I'm doing this. That's it for this video, guys. Um, I hope you enjoyed it or found it useful. Um, a lot of the stuff I'm doing, it's all trial and I'm doing, you know, I don't really know if a lot of it's going to work, but time will tell and we'll figure that out. Um, so thanks for watching. Um, if you like it, please subscribe and hit the like button to try and get the channel move along a little bit. Um, every little bit helps. So thanks.